That's it. I'm going around the front. You go down the basement. Joe Pesci is an American actor whose gangster and comedy roles turned him into a Hollywood star. Pesci's career was neither easy nor fast, and now he appears in movies only through friends. In this video, we will tell you about the life of one of the most charismatic actors and the favorite of director Martin Scorsese. Joe Pesci how the wet bandit from Home Alone lives, and what happened to him. Joseph Frank Pesci, or simply Joe Pesci, was born on February 9, 1943 in Newark, New Jersey. His family is of Italian origin, and his last name means fish. Joe's father, Angelo, worked as a loader driver at General Motors, and in the evenings, he worked as a bartender. His mother, Maria, was a part-time hairdresser, devoting the rest of her time to household chores. Joe's acting talent manifested itself in early childhood. At the age of four, he first appeared on the radio, and when he turned five, he made his debut on the stage of one of the theaters in New York. When the Pesci family moved to the neighboring town of Belleville in the late 40s, the boy went to school there, and at the age of 10, he performed regularly on a television variety show called Star Time Kids. As a teenager, he practiced judo, but his real dream was to become a musician. Joe was friends with singers Frankie Valli and Tommy DeVito, even though they were much older than him and in 1959, at the age of 16, he helped them meet singer and songwriter Bob Gaudio. In this way, he contributed to the creation of The Four Seasons, which was soon to be a great success. Many years later, Pesci even played a character in the musical Jersey Boys, which told the story of that popular band. Joe played guitar in several bands in the 60s, simultaneously earning a living as a hairdresser. Besides, in 1961, he appeared in the movie Hey, Let's Twist as a dancer, but was not even listed in the credits. In 1964, Pesci got married for the first time. He just turned 21, and his fiancée was 18. According to the actor, they were both too young and didn't know each other at all, so the marriage broke up a year later. At the same time, Pesci didn't leave his dreams of a musical career, and in 1968, under the name of Joe Ritchie, he released his debut album entitled Little Joe Shore Can Sing. In it, the young man performed covers of pop hits, but the record failed. He also tried his hand at stand-up, performing in a duet with his friend Frank Vincent in clubs and restaurants in New York. After that, Pesci tried his luck in the cinema again in 1976, playing the role of a corrupt policeman in the crime drama The Death Collector. The movie didn't bring success to its creators and actors, and after that, Joe was forced to leave for New York, where he got a job managing a restaurant in the Bronx and lived in a tiny room above it. He was about to give up acting ambitions, but his performance in The Death Collector was noticed by Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. Three years later, they invited Joe to star as Jake LaMotta's brother in the new project Raging Bull. Well, go ahead and kill everybody. You're a tough guy, go kill people. Kill Vicky, kill Salvi, kill Tommy Como, kill me while you're out. What do I care? You're killing yourself the way you eat. You're a fat fuck, look at you. This was a sports biopic about a famous boxer, known both for his achievements and for his tough, unbridled temper and tendency to self-destruction. It was released in November 1980 and eventually became a cult classic. Viewers and critics faced an unprecedented cocktail of violence and outbursts of anger, which filled the biography of the athlete. But this didn't prevent the movie from receiving many nominations for the major film awards. Pesci won the BAFTA Film Award for newcomer to leading film roles and received his first nomination for a Golden Globe and an Oscar. The National Society of Film Critics also paid attention to the actor. He was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. In Raging Bull, Joe co-starred with Robert De Niro, and they became not only a successful movie duo, but also good friends. It didn't hurt the friendship that during the filming of the fight, Robert accidentally broke Joe's rib. In the next few years, Pesci starred in such films as the German crime drama Dear Mr. Wonderful, the biopic I'm Dancing As Fast As I Can, the thriller Eureka, and the comedy Easy Money. After that, the actor met De Niro again on the set of Sergio Leone's crime drama 
Once Upon a Time in America, which was released in 1984. Joe appeared in it for a very short time, playing the gangster Frankie, who instructed the main character and his friends to pull off a tricky deal with diamonds. What he means is that it's something that's very simple. But for now, he needs kids from outside to handle it. I mean, he just found out that they're going to move these diamonds to Holland in a few days. So something came up right away. Pesci chose this character himself. Initially, he auditioned for the role of Max, a friend of the main character, but he was not approved. Then the director suggested the actor choose another role. Then Pesci's filmography was replenished by the crime comedy Everybody in Jail, TV series Half Nelson, and the Franco-Italian thriller Man on Fire. In the late 80s, he was invited by Michael Jackson to his musical anthology film Moonwalker. Pesci got the role of the villain, Mr. Big, in the sixth and longest segment called Smooth Criminal. At the same time, Joe got married again. His fiance was the model, Claudia Harrow, who gave birth to the actor's daughter, Tiffany. According to some reports, the girl followed in her mother's footsteps and also became a model. And according to others, she suffers from a mental disorder and is forced to live in a specialized clinic. As for her parents, they divorced in 1992 and remained friends. Joe not only paid his ex-wife $3 million as part of the divorce process, but also helped her launch her acting career. On the five films she starred in, four were Pesci's films. However, this friendship went sideways for Joe because many years later he was involved in a high-profile lawsuit. Claudia was charged with the attempted murder of her ex-husband, stuntman Garrett Warren. After the divorce, the man received joint custody of their little daughter, and Hara retaliated by hiring a hitman for $10,000. Where she got the money from is unknown, but one of the potential sources was Joe Pesci. Nevertheless, there was no evidence of the actor's involvement in the crime, and charges were never brought against him. Meanwhile, moviegoers could see Pesci in such films as The Legendary Life of Ernest Hemingway, Betsy's Wedding, Catch Fire, and Lethal Weapon 2, Okay, let me see a bad Shut up. Okay, I get it. Bad cop, good cop. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Bad cop, bad cop. I got it. I know. In the latter, he played the role of a witness whose testimony was supposed to help the police uncover the plan of the criminals. The movie became almost more popular than the first part, receiving almost $230 million at the box office. Another successful film of the early 90s was the crime drama Goodfellas. How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. Get the fuck out of here, Tommy. <laughs> you motherfucker. I almost had him. I almost had him. <laughs> yeah, stutter him. In it, Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, and director Martin Scorsese once again teamed up to film Nicholas Pileggi's novel, Wise Guy. The actor played a villain whose charm and soft facial features went against his behavior. And for this work, he was nominated for a Golden Globe and received an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Moreover, Pesci himself was sure that he would lose, so his thank you speech was as short as possible. He just said, it's my privilege, thank you. Goodfellas was also appreciated by the actor's mother, but she didn't like that her son swears too much on the screen. There were really a lot of swear words. During the film, the F word and its variants were used 275 times in total, and in most cases, Joe Pesci's character was the one who said them. Another movie of that period starring Pesci proved that he is able to act not only in crime stories, but also in family films. In the Christmas comedy Home Alone, from screenwriter John Hughes and director Chris Columbus, Joe played the unlucky thief Harry, one of a couple of robbers who were nicknamed the Wet Bandits. Don't worry, Marv, I'll get him for you! Sorry. Pesci's character was the brain of this criminal duo, and the performer of the main role, Macaulay Culkin, was scared of him even outside the set. The actor refused to treat the boy kindly and didn't talk to him much. And during the rehearsal of the scene, where Kevin is hung on a hook, he actually bit his finger. Pesci was also constantly swearing, and Chris Columbus suggested replacing the F word with fridge. 
but it's still rumored that Joe filled the swear jar completely in just one day. The adult actors had to put change in it whenever they used obscene language. A few years later, Pesci starred in the sequel to Kevin's Adventures, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. And during the filming, besides numerous bruises and minor injuries, he suffered a severe head burn. Also, the actor appeared in Lethal Weapon 3, the thriller JFK, the comedy movies The Super, My Son Vinny, and With Honors, as well as three crime films, The Public Eye, A Bronx Tale, and Jimmy Hollywood. Joe Pesci's film for the latter film was $3.5 million. In 1995, Scorsese adapted another book by Nicholas Pileggi and filmed a poignant gangster drama Casino, in which, as expected, the audience saw the duet of De Niro and Pesci. According to Scorsese, without them, he wouldn't have been able to succeed as a director. Maybe if I stick your fucking face through this window over here, like, you know, you'll, you'll get unconfused. Give me the fucking money. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean it. Yeah, I know. That's why you had it ready. You thought I was fucking laying it? Fucking Most critics recognized that in the casino, Joe fully revealed his talent, but it came with a price. Ironically, he broke the same rib as on the set of Raging Bull. In his next film, the 1997 crime comedy Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag, Pesci wore a special denture, and a bit later, the movie Gone Fishing premiered. A year later, the fourth part of Lethal Weapon was released, for which the actor received a fee of $3 million. After that, Pesci announced the end of his acting career. He said that at some point he lost himself in a series of movie characters and unexpectedly realized it on the golf course during a golf swing. This realization gave Joe the idea to return to music. In 1998, he released his second mini-album. It was both a humorous and serious multi-genre work, although most of it was big band jazz. At the same time, the cinema didn't let him go, because many songs are sung from the point of view of his character in the film My Cousin Vinny, and the album title also refers to him. Vincent LaGuardia Gambini sings Just For You. The song Wise Guy stands out the most, where Joe sampled Blondie's song Rapture. Don't do blow and I don't sell crack. Stay alert, I got someone to whack. After the second divorce, Joe Pesci has been trying to avoid serious relationships. At the same time, he briefly dated actress and model Leanne Littrell. But in 2000, he finally gave up and began a long-term relationship with Angie Everhart, a former girlfriend and even fiancé of Sylvester Stallone. Seven years later, Pesci proposed to the woman, but the wedding never took place. Because less than a year after the engagement, the couple broke up. In the 2000s, Pesci reconsidered his decision to end his film career, making an exception for a friend. In 2006, he appeared in Robert De Niro's directorial work, The Good Shepherd. We Italians, we got our families and we got the church. The Irish, they have the homeland. The Jews, their tradition. Even the niggas, they got their music. Joe played a small role but the audience was still glad to have him back. But critics' reaction to the film was rather lukewarm. Some even called it sluggish and unconvincing. The next time Pesci agreed to return to the screen was in 2010. He and Helen Mirren played the organizers of the first brothel in Nevada in the comedy Love Ranch. Little was known about Joe's personal life after breaking up with Angie Everhart. There are rumors that he dated the owner of a flower shop in New York named Joey House, but there are no photos or other details on the internet. In 2011, the actor was supposed to play a friend of the main character in the crime biopic Gotti, and for this, he gained almost 30 pounds. However, the producers decided to transfer him to another role and offered a lower salary. The offended Pesci sued them for $3 million. How much he eventually received is unknown, because the lawsuit was settled out of court in 2013. The film, by the way, was released only in 2018. While working in the cinema brought Joe stress, playing golf helped him to relax. He played every day, and his partners on the golf course were Jack Nicholson, John Daly, and Dennis Hopper. By the way, 
For a while, horse racing was another hobby of the actor, and he was a co-owner of a racehorse named Pesci. After the failure with Gotti, the actor refused to work in the cinema for a long time. He said no dozens of times, even to his friends De Niro and Scorsese, who planned to film a movie based on a true story of racketeer Frank Sheeran. In the end, Pesci agreed with the argument that this might be the last chance for all three of them to participate in one project and gave up. In the film The Irishman, Joe played Russell Buffalino, one of the key figures of the narrative the head of a criminal family, and a friend of De Niro's character. And they were accompanied by Al Pacino. It was a truly stellar cast. To assemble the team, Netflix paid $105 million. The premiere took place in 2019, and critics praised the film. It tells the story of the Irishman in the context of American history and exposes the immorality of big politics, which through Scorsese's lens looks very similar to the mafia. Cuba. Getting us back into casinos. Getting us back into Havana. Like getting rid of that fucking Castro prick. Joe Pesci has been nominated for an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, a Golden Globe, and an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. The only thing that wasn't perceived well was the digital rejuvenation of the three main characters, each of whom was over 70. Also in 2019, Pesci released his third album of 13 jazz songs called Still Singing. Critics called the record more lounge than jazz, in other words, lighter, and the critics appreciated the pleasant voice of the performer. The song My Sherry Amore recorded as a duet with the popular musician Adam Levine, is particularly noteworthy. How I wish that you were mine. Although Joe Pesci rarely appears in movies, he has managed to accumulate a fortune estimated at $50 million. It is believed that in the 90s, the actor earned about $20 million, $2 million per film on average, and the total earnings for his entire acting career amounted to about $35.5 million. At the same time, at least 45% of this amount went to taxes. Pesci's earnings were not limited to film royalties, Sometimes he also received advertising contracts. In the 90s, Joe voiced the video for Pepsi. In 2011, he portrayed the alter ego of a young man in a Snickers advertisement. And in 2019, he reprised his role from Home Alone in a video for Google. For a long time, Joe lived on the east coast of the USA. In 1994, he paid $850,000 for a mansion with an area of almost 8,000 square feet in New Jersey. It has eight bedrooms, the main one has a private balcony, a luxurious bathroom, and a private office. Besides, the house has a spacious living room, several dining rooms, a kitchen, a media room, and a mini bar. And outside, it has an outdoor heated swimming pool, spa, and even a private pier. In 2019, Pesci put the house up for sale for $6.5 million and sold it in October of 2021 for an unknown price. It is reported that after the sale, the actor moved to California. Joe Pesci has a black vintage car in his garage, but in general, he tries to keep the details of his private life a secret. Many colleagues spoke of him as a gentle and modest person, despite the fact that he played many hot-tempered and violent characters. Perhaps we will see Joe on the screen again, because his friends are still working in show business. What role would you like to see him in? Merry Christmas. If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.